Let's do this. What is happening guys? Welcome to FPL Dave's Monday night stream. I hope you've all had an amazing weekend. I myself has have had a great weekend watching Scotland get absolutely pumped. So that's been a lot a lot of fun. I was actually kind of annoyed like, oh, I'm going to miss half of the Scotland game. But honestly, the first half was enough for me. Uh, Kevin De Bruyne is absolutely ruining, ruining Scotland right now. So I'm glad that I'm not watching anymore. I hope everyone uh, here is having a great night despite the Scotland score. I don't know how many Scottish people are actually in the chat. Is it going Liam? Is Roz here as well? Mick. Welcome to the stream, buddy. How's it going? Um, so tonight, I'm going to tell you guys about all the research that I've been doing. You know, I kind of didn't really do much last week. I was kind of still working stuff out what I wanted to do with my transfers and all the rest of it. We also had um, FPL Audit on, or one half of FPL Audit on. So if you didn't see that, check that out. Um, it's on the YouTube channel somewhere. Um, but this weekend... I did a shit ton of research going uh, into game week five to eight. So I'm going to be discussing all about that, um, especially the the teams. I've got four teams lined up for you guys. Um, and I'll show you who that is in just a minute. Um, but first, I wanted to go through, first of all, how awesome does this new camera look? Like, I can't believe, like, look at that. It's so good. It's so good. I feel high. Like just looking at my hands, but I, and I couldn't really shout about it last time because it started off really horrible <laughs> and like the screen like totally jumped out of my face. But um, this time, you know, everything's working good, so I'm pleased with that. Um, right, housekeeping. First of all, um, I want to do a full live stream for however long it takes for me to build my very first wildcard team game week nine. So if you haven't followed the stream yet. Uh, please follow uh, so that I can get to my my goal which is 200 followers and at 200 followers I'm going to do a full I don't know if it's four hours or whatever it is that I can build my full first wildcard team and I really want to do that so if you haven't followed if you're watching this on YouTube go to my Twitch channel there'll be a link in the description I've always wanted to say that <laughs> link in the description and then go and uh, go and find my Twitch channel and follow so I can get that I know 200 is a bit of a high goal considering there's only like four weeks until game week nine and i've only got 100 followers just now but it would be really nice to get close at least so uh that would be awesome uh second thing to shout about is i was asked to go on the uh fantasy weekly podcast as a guest which was really awesome so thank you very much uh james for asking me to do that and that's coming out on wednesday at two o'clock we're talking to fpl general and uh and fpl community uh i think i got that right um which is Holly just talking a lot about Game Week 5 and uh, what's coming up in captaincy options and all that stuff. So that was awesome. And then finally, uh, the Monday After article that goes up on uh, Fantasy Football Scout. That should be up either right now, tonight-ish, or tomorrow. There was a bit of an issue with the upload, but I'm pretty sure it should be up soon. So that is going to be awesome, and I'll be tweeting about that. All right. Enough shite chat about non-FPL stuff well it is off FPL but no learnings are going on I want let's get this show on the road the first team that I'm going to be looking at as part of the game week five to game week eight fixtures and who has the best fixtures going up there is of course everyone's favorite right now <laughs> okay maybe not everyone's favorite but it is Aston Villa um Aston Villa have really really good fixtures their best run um, of the season so far definitely they rank fourth on uh, our fixture tracker and I want to go through their team a little bit just to show you guys who I would like to shout about um, for Aston Villa now there's obviously a bit of an issue because we probably aren't going to see many clean sheets um, but they have really good fixtures so we're not going to be able to kind of predict exactly what's going on there and um, and also the second issue is that they're kind of rotating, like annoyingly, they rotate a lot. Um, I was looking at like El Gaza, I was looking at Mohamedy, um, Gilbert, uh, and a few other players, and they, they, they're not playing every game. So that's a bit of an issue. Hold on while I drink my bourbon. Mm. 
But let's go into it. It's the first player that is on everyone's list is obviously McGinn. McGinn has been playing phenomenally for both Scotland and for Aston Villa. Um, he got a goal in the first game. He got an assist against Everton. Um, they also got got a clean sheet in that game as well. Um, they've been doing really, really, really amazing. And it's annoying not owning McGinn. Um, I went for Ceballos instead. Um, but McGinn has looked better and Ceballos has been kind of on the bench. So um, I think that... McGinn is the best value pick in midfield, and that includes Cantwell. Um, for 5.6 million, he's, he's perfectly priced, and he's also his ownership is just 6.8%, which means that he's a differential. Um, so let's go ahead and look at the table that he's going to be playing against. Now, we do know that Aston Villa haven't really scored that many goals. They've only scored four, and he's been directly involved in half of them so far. So if there is going to be goals... I'm sure that he's going to be involved in them somehow. So this right here is the Understat website. I don't know if we've actually ever used that on the stream. I've been looking at it a lot more uh, this year than last year and been using it um, quite frequently to look up who, what the teams uh, that people are going to be facing, the goals, specifically the, the, the expected goals against. Um, so I wanted to show you guys this because I thought it was very interesting. Um, quite quite proud that I found this actually <laughs> is that the next teams that Aston Villa are facing let's just remind ourselves right are West Ham then Arsenal but we're not really expecting much against them and then Burnley and then Norwich right so for game week five six seven eight we've got West Ham Burnley and Norwich um, I guess we can include Arsenal in there if we want to um, if we look at their expected goals against and we they're right there so nine eight seven six so we've got we've got it in order of worst to best from the bottom right look at that west ham bournemouth norwich arsenal we can't really pick aston villa because they're not going to be playing themselves but every single opponent that aston villa are going to be coming up against every single team that they're going to be coming up against is uh has the worst stats for goals against like that's that's nuts when has that ever happened i've never seen that before so that means that the teams that are are maybe not conceding the most goals but definitely conceding the most chances and and, and looking the leakiest in terms of defense um are all the teams that aston villa are going to be playing so we could probably assume based on that that they're going to be scoring a shit ton more than they have been um and mcginn looks amazing liam says he likes to look him again yeah how can you not he's playing teams that have shit defenses um he's in amongst most of the goals it's just an all-round good day to to be a mcginn owner um now like i said they haven't really been scoring that much but they haven't had the worst uh or the they haven't had the best start in terms of fixtures um so we look at mcginn here there he is mr sexy oh he's not that older i'm actually older than him well that's weird to say oh now i feel old right moving right along um his his style of play on who scored.com <laughs> that's depressing yeah i know it's definitely depressing let's just move right along from that uh, he likes to play long balls he likes to dribble he likes to tackle all things that are great for the old uh, bonus he also gets fouled often which is great for penalties um just all all round great um, let's look at the last couple games he's played. Um, Crystal Palace away. Difficult one. Not expecting too many goals. They're just so good in defence. Um, continuously. Uh, then Everton. We all know uh, what happened there. Despite losing against Crystal Palace, he got man of the match. And then he got man of the match and an assist against Everton uh, at home. They lost to Bournemouth. Um, a bit of a shite game from, from their point of view, from everyone's. And he still managed over seven in the ratings. Um, and then the Tottenham game, he managed to get a goal, uh, and it was that amazing long ball, just skinning everyone and getting the goal. So he's a great player. He's only 5.6 million. I feel like he's, it's a no-brainer if you need someone in that price range, um, especially since looking at the teams that he's already played, which have been quite difficult. You know, that's not an easy fixture run. Tottenham, Everton, Crystal Palace, um, Bournemouth. I don't really know what happened there. 
I watched the game back before this stream and it was just seemed like Bournemouth were just playing all right and Aston Villa weren't. Um, but yeah, McGinn, fucking amazing. It looks really, really, really strong. Um, another player that looks equally good. Um, well, not equally good, but you, you look, he's the second best pick, I think, on their team. Um, and that's a weird one because you'd think it was a defender, but it's actually this man. Mr. Wesley. <laughs> Israel just typed in Della, Della Yeah, it's not him. <laughs> it's never going to be him. I'm very glad that, uh, actually, you know, Watford's, um, Watford just went in and sacked uh, their manager and I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing for Delefeu but it's definitely good for anyone who's coming up against Watford because they're gonna be a shambles right now right imagine taking a team up to like the final of the FA Cup um, losing against Man City which is difficult for any team um, and then getting sacked four games in the next season is mental um, but anyway Wesley has got one goal um, he, he plays every minute, um, mostly, he's, he's not a rotation risk, he's only 6 million, which is pretty good for someone who's going to be constantly playing, especially against all those teams that we talked about there, uh, there, that, of course, don't have the best defences, um, is Delafeo Essential yet? No, he'll never be Essential. Jimmy says... That Watford brought in their old manager, it's mental they are either nailed on, relegation are gonna resurge. Yeah, we're gonna have to look, but for right now it's an obvious, easy, easy, easy pass. Um So yeah, this is Wesley. Uh if you don't know anything about me, I haven't heard about him, he's doing well. <laughs> um he actually has the let me just triple check that. Do 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 because I've got notes this time. Um, he has the most touches in the box with 4.3 um, and I can actually show you guys that right now. Um, he has the most touches in the box of, of any bo uh, Aston Villa player, um, which isn't that much to be fair, but you know, considering that we're looking at players on their team, it's good to see who the best is so far. Um, so let's look into this. Bam. All right, so this is Tim Byers' amazing stat center. Um, I would recommend using this. I'll actually post it in the chat just now because it's fun to play around with. He's actually amazing. Do 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 do. So this is uh, goals, actual goals, shots and shots on target. And um, Wesley there, uh, he's top for shot or second to shots on target behind El Ghazi and I was gonna talk about him today but he didn't play the last game he got benched it's really weird I don't know why and they played well but they didn't get any goals so I'm not sure why he was benched um, but for anyone who's looking to downgrade Yota or anyone who's looking to get like a you know a rid of Murray or whoever 6.0 million player and you don't want to take a hit and you just want to kind of go for anyone I think Wesley's pretty good unless you're going to be downgrading. I would say he's the least, the least uh, money that you could spend on a striker. Mick, thanks very much for the bits, buddy. I'm thinking the man, the myth, the good he the hair, Jack Grealish. <laughs> Thank you very much for the bits, buddy. I appreciate it. Dra Jack Grealish is another player that's just kind of like he's in about it. He's everywhere. He's doing all sorts of stuff. His map, his, his heat map is is all over the place. But he's just he's just not a good FPL asset. I wish he was. It would be amazing to have him. Because I think he's just a great player. But he, like, why would you pay almost the same price when you can just get McGinn? Who's going to be bombing it? Um, so, that yeah, that's, that's pretty much the state of Aston Villa's midfield. Is that they're just... There's just so many, so many uh, worse options than McGinn. He's actually better than quite a lot of options that we currently have out of all the players in the Premier League um, in midfield that are around the same price. So, yeah, I think it's McGinn all the way, buddy. Poor man's Buendia, yeah. All right, let's go back to this. So, creativity, uh, non-existent, which is fine for a striker. Key pass and big chances, 
he's not really in it to win it in that respect. He's more of a let's just go up and finish. Real life tears over him again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Scotland. Don't remind me. Oh, I don't even want to look at this score. Um, so Wesley's right up there. Most touches in the box. And if you notice, that says 1.9 shots in the box. And if we go up, he has 1.9 shots per 90 anyway, which means 100% of his shots are coming from in the box, which is exactly what you want from a striker. You want him in the box, you want him running around the box, and you want him scoring goals. Now, he's only scored one, but remember they've came up against pretty, pretty decent defenses. Crystal Palace away, um, you know, they played... Let me just triple, triple check. So Tottenham was obviously difficult, and they managed to get a goal, right? But that's a way right and the first game of the season you're expecting to lose against Tottenham Bournemouth again like I said was weird Everton was such a good upset that was really really good for them um, and that's when Wesley actually got his goal and then Crystal Palace away again is difficult so I'm hoping I'm hoping that if they, we start looking at the, the teams that they are going to be playing West Ham Bournemouth Norwich Arsenal that because of their high expected goals against um that we'll be seeing a lot more goals and Wesley will probably be as involved as McGinn. So for a really, really cheap striker, I think he's a decent shout. Decent shout. Um, now here's the next player that we're going to be looking at. I don't really know anything about him. This was someone who I actually had to look up um, and, and research specifically for this stream. I didn't want to just give you two Aston Villa players and then be like, right, that's awesome. There you go pick those two and nothing i kind of wanted a defender now originally it was el mohammedi right because if you if we go back to this and we look at the player with like the most creativity el mohammedi's up there right but he's just kind of been dethroned by gilbert and i don't know why i don't know why that i don't know why they've kind of taken him out maybe gilbert was always going to be someone playing um at right back but he has had if we quickly look down he's had uh, 90 minutes in both of the last matches so he has quickly dethroned El Mohamedy um, he wasn't even in the squad for the first two matches so I don't know if he was injured or if he was taking it uh, a, a longer break for whatever reason he is now fully integrated in the squad um, and let's quickly look at his heat map because I thought that was a very interesting it's actually better than oh can you guys see that okay it's actually better than what the, his predecessor in the first two games were so there's Gilbert against Crystal Palace a game that they lost and a game that they were away let's not forget that they were actually they went away to Crystal Palace and look at his heat map he's fucking miles up look at the state of him so that's pretty that's pretty goddamn good for a for a fullback that plays for Aston Villa that shows that they are super attacking and that they're willing to get up even though they're going against decent teams or teams that they're expecting to you know park the bus against or or or, or at least try and, and secure a draw so another thing to note is that his touches are a lot more than taylor his counterpart on the left hand side so taylor 55 touches for gilbert is 75 so that's a lot more um and i found this on reddit i think i showed you guys last time um I think I showed you guys this when we were talking to FPL Audit, but you can see that Taylor on the left hand side there, he's a bit smaller in the circle, which means he's, he's passing less. Um, Gilbert's a bit higher up, he also has a lot more passes, a lot more things happening on that right hand side. Um, he also has a few passes from... <laughs> Thanks Jimmy for the fucking bits. I heard you're going with triple captain Delafeu for game week five. Yes, I'm going to be swapping out Pookie for Delafeu, and Watford at home are going to slam Arsenal. I will give someone literally five quid to do that. If or any time you just waste your triple captain on 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 Watford and Delafeu, and if he scores, if he does anything, if he gets any points attacking attacking wise i'll give you so much money <laughs> it's just not gonna happen he's just so shit he's just so sh he's so good he's so good as a player but he's just so shit right now and so weird and still he's still got so many people let's have a look right now i know that i didn't want to get 
I, did, I didn't want to get uh, taken off of what I was talking about, right? But look, look, 2.6%. 2.6% people still have them. You know how many people that is? Nearly 200,000 players that play this game still have Dela Feu. That's nuts. That's nuts. And, the, and law of averages, at least one of them are going to use their triple, car, triple captain on him. I can't abide. That's just, it's just... Oh my god. <laughs> I'm so happy that he's not. He's not on my team. He's nowhere near my team. And I told so many people to not get him. And they, some of them listened. Mm. Just love to hate on the guy. Love to hate on the guy. Thanks very much for the bits, Jimmy. Jim Bob, Jimmo. Right, where the fuck were we? <laughs> this is just what the stream is. Me talking. Someone saying something. It's Raw didn't listen. I know you didn't, buddy. And I feel for you. I hope you got him out. Who did you get him out for again? Or maybe you have him right now. And you're thinking maybe Wesley. Let's see. Right, who are we talking about? Yeah, Gilbert. Barnes. See, Barnes, that's a decent thing. We're actually going to be talking about Burnley um, in a few minutes. So that's going to be good. So with Gilbert... He had the highest XG chain. Most of the stuff that is happening against Crystal Palace there in game week four, we're going through the right hand side. You can see that Engels had the most passes, the most progressive carrying, the most centrality. Everything was kind of going through their center back. So they're playing from the back. Gilbert is running up. You can see a few passes there if we go a bit closer in. Can you guys see that? I'm just gonna zoom right in, right? Gilbert is passing to McGinn and passing into space so that's really good he also has two arrows to taylor's one which means he's getting in a higher position so if you're gonna go for a, a defender from aston villa and then we're not expecting amazing things from aston villa but if you're gonna be going for one of them it would definitely be for me gilbert because he's played 90 minutes and um, he played really well against aston villa or crystal palace despite not winning despite being away etc etc um the only thing that would put me off, and it isn't the rotation, it isn't, it definitely isn't the rotation, because I've, I've, I've read countless reports that he was supposed to be their right back from the beginning anyway, and uh, Mohamedy was just kind of like covering the spot for him. Um, but right now, the only thing that's put me away, if you guys can see that, he's got two yellow cards in two games. That's not great. It's not great at all. So for me, uh, John McGinn, first choice. Wesley, second choice. Gilbert, third. Um, and like I said, um, oh, I just wanted to show you this as well before we move on. Um, Gilbert actually, in a defensive uh, aspect, has one less tackle than Taylor, but three more interceptions than him and actually is the best for interceptions on the team against Crystal Palace there. Um, made a clearance, but not as many as the center backs, of course, um, which actually shows that he is farther up than everyone else in the defense. Um, and yeah, he got a yellow card and he, he puts a, a fair amount of fouls in, which again, like I said, is a bit of an issue. But if we look at the passing, uh, four crosses, which is amazing. Um, key passes one, which is better than all the rest of the defense. Um, he even got an accurate cross in there. The only person to beat him is, of course, Mr. John again. Two accurate crosses, two key passes, 81 pass accuracy compared to the 72. So yeah, I, I feel like Frederick is going to be good, and he'll come into his own um, as he builds up his fitness and he builds up his, you know, team knowledge and stuff and how the Premier League is and everything else. Because um, this is his second game in the Premier League, right? So think about what's going to be happening against a, a worse defense. I feel like that's going to be something that he will excel at. Um, the last player that I looked at, like I said earlier, was this guy, this chap. I don't even know how to pronounce his name. Anwar, Anwar El Ghazi. That's exactly how you say it. Um, and if we go down, he played 90 minutes, then he played 75 minutes. Then he played 13 minutes, meaning he came off the bench and scored. And then now he played on the bench against Crystal Palace and didn't do anything. So even though we looked at the stats back here, and we've seen that in terms of shots and shots on target, he was the, he was the highest for shots. 
and he's the highest uh, for XG. For whatever reason, he's went from 90 minutes to 75 to 13 to on the bench. So that's why you know you've got to look at the whole thing and not just you're not just one one bit of stat. You got to kind of look at them all. Um, so he would have been a good pick, but he's now absolutely a no go because of how many minutes he's getting. It's just went it's got less and less as the as the season progressed. So it's definitely this bad boy right here as my pick um, for that. So if you've got I don't know if you've got someone in your team in the midfield and you want to downgrade them i would definitely be considering john mcginn if you're trying to free up funds for elsewhere um if he scores this game week his price will rise because he's already close to it he's already doing well um and he's on everyone's radar they're just waiting to kind of jump into him um now i know he's playing right now and I would love to go and look to see, <laughs> I would love to go and look to see if he'd been subbed off or anything, but I'm actually scared to go and see what the Scotland score is. So if someone could just tell me in the chat, that would be great. Not the score, just if he'd been subbed off or if he's playing the full 90. Because that might affect our, our thinking a little bit. Although it is Monday and he's not playing until the next Monday. So it's not even that big of a deal. Actually, I take it back. It's not a big deal. That's a whole week. And it's not like he's flying from anywhere. He's, he's probably probably go down in the train. <laughs> Score certainly has improved since halftime, Dave. Right, awesome. <laughs> Thanks for letting me know. I'm so glad. Um, yeah, Jimmy, I think the um, I think the international the international uh, games are kind of skewing our our data right now in terms of player uh, people watching but i think we'll be golden i think we'll be fine this is going to be a youtuber i can feel it this is so informative uh, this is the first time i've been absolutely on it in terms of my uh, prep subbed on in the subbed on in the 87th minute so we didn't even start well that's good well that's very good or subbed are you sure you didn't start oh no i can't look if i look i'm gonna be annoyed <laughs> subbed on well, that's good. That's that's great. So, John McGinn, yeah, he's in. He's good. Um, so, we'll have a look at teams later. We'll do the RMT. And if it's... Uh, he subbed on, definitely. Okay, awesome. Cheers, Raw. Um, so, we'll do the RMTs later on in the, in the stream. And we'll be thinking about adding John McGinn uh, as one of our, like, go-to guys. Kenny McLean started ahead of him. What a travesty. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. All right. So that is Aston Villa. Next team to look at. Bam, ba bam, ba bam. These guys. Arsenal have good fixtures. They have great fixtures uh, in our table for best fixtures. They are third i'm pretty sure um we can absolutely go check that just now um the only problem with these tim if you're watching i hope you are watching i love everything you do but they refresh and i have to refresh them every single time so for the next fixtures yeah arsenal are third so you can see there aston villa fourth arsenal third and then two guesses of who we're going to be talking about later on so uh, arsenal play watford aston villa Man United and Bournemouth and we just spoke about how Bournemouth and Aston Villa if we look at the uh, the XG the XGA sorry the expected goals against uh, we've got Bournemouth is second worst and Aston Villa are fourth worst and if we look for uh, Watford they are just ahead of Tottenham um, at 6.19 expected goals against in four matches and they've actually been scored into eight times so I feel like all of these teams that Arsenal are playing are also pretty shit when it comes to defense so let's have a look at some of the assets it's got to be it's got to be Obama Young he is by far their best player right now I mean Lacazette is doing great but unfortunately he is just a bench player sometimes and sometimes he starts and sometimes he comes on and does well um, he's been injured for a little bit Lacazette is not someone we can really optimally 
ultimately go for right now. So I would just spend the extra one point, excuse me, 1.5 million and get this man. Aubameyang's been on fire. He scored three goals in four games. He's yet to blank. So when he did play Liverpool, he managed to get that assist. Um, the problem is getting to Aubameyang is really difficult, right? Unless you own Kane, you can swap. But if you have, if you have anyone else other than Kane, um, and I'm not including Aguero because you're not going to get rid of Aguero right now. But if you have anyone else other than Kane, then that's two transfers to get Aubameyang. Um, and it is definitely going to be difficult if you don't have someone like Vardy or something. Because um, you're going to have to lose a premium. And we know from previous seasons that all of the experts that play fantasy football have said that we just keep our premiums the way they are. Unless we're on wild card, there's no reason to chop and change. Because if you go from Salah to Mane, back to Salah, because Salah starts doing well, you know, that's that's transfers that you're going to go back and forth and back and forth, and you're going to miss those hauls. So you just kind of stay still with those. Um, unless you have a planned action. So in terms of Kane owners, I think it would be good to step off Kane and onto Aubameyang, because Aubameyang's good fixtures are just about to start. So playing against Liverpool and Tottenham, and he's still got attacking returns, I think it's, he's only going to go up, especially against some of the worst defences in the league. Bournemouth, Aston Villa. Um, if you have the means to get him, or you're on your wild card, then for me, it'd be very difficult to say I'm not going to be getting him. But if you're like me, and you're like loads of other players that don't have their wild card activated, then there's a few other players that we can go for. Ceballos is someone that I jumped on to game week two or just after game week two. I watched that game that he played against Burnley. He got two assists and he just just screamed, I am underpriced. He should be about eight million. But then he plays for Arsenal and he's going to be constantly rotated. So I'm not 100% sure what I want to do with him right now. Um, I'm hoping that because A, he only played one game in international. B, Xhaka and Torreira got injured in international. C, Xhaka and Torreira didn't look that good against Tottenham. And D, um, they maybe didn't play him against Tottenham to start because it was a derby and he's new. Um, and then, of course, everyone keeps talking about how Real Madrid, one of the parts of the contract was that he needs minutes. All these things add up to a... Now, of course, maybe biased because I own him, but but they all add up to him playing predominantly. Um, yes, Ozil's a worry, but Ozil's only a worry in the sense that he might start one or two games, show how shit he has became and how just full of Minecraft and full of Fortnite that he is. And then Sabias will come on and dominate. Um, if Sabias can get the minutes, you know he's going to do well. All his stats show like I am a beast and I'm going to do amazing. Unfortunately, he hasn't had enough game time to show that in any table or anything that I've been using because he's had such a little game time. But just in that game week two, he was, he's a monster. So hopefully he can continue that. And at 5.7, he's the exact same price as um, McGinn, pretty much, right? He's in the same price bracket. He's cheaper than Lanzini. He's cheaper than Mount. He's cheaper than he's cheaper than so many players, and he should be way more. But I can understand people's apprehens uh, apprehension from from jumping on him. I probably, if I didn't own him right now, would go McGinn. But I'm absolutely fine owning him, and owners should not be worried about it unless he doesn't play the next two games. If he misses Watford and he misses Aston Villa, then he's gonna go out my team. Um, but right now he looks amazing. Eight million, please. I'm telling you, if he plays every single game and he plays as well as he was doing in game week two and he gets assist after assist and maybe gets one of those long shots that go in, like, how can he not be? What Like, he plays for a top six team, a very attacking Arsenal side. Um, yeah, he's just, he's just amazing. Liam says he wants him. Tips, how's it going, buddy? Appreciate you coming over. How's it going, man? I seen that you were doing a Q&A. That's, I'm going to be watching that, by the way. I don't know when that's happening. 
but I'm gonna, I seen some of the questions. I was actually about to type in one of the questions to your Q&A and then I seen that it was already asked. So, and I won't tell you which one, but uh, I'm gonna have a look. Kevin De Bruyne got a 10 out of 10 rating tonight in the match. Three assists and a goal and a 4-0 win. Oh. And there's the score. <laughs> oh. Fucking, honestly, Scotland, you just, you, you build us up, buttercup, and then you fuck us so hard. <laughs> I mean, we're never expecting anything against Belgium, but Jesus Christ. <laughs> Oh, tips. Hey, Polly, man. How's it going? Ah, I see. Maybe now, because the games are finished, everyone's going to be coming on. That might be good. I might just retweet. Or I might just say we are live. Potentially. Yeah, let's tweet. I'm going to be tweeting. How's everyone doing just now? Did you not want to know the score? Ah, I mean, it was 3-0 last time I looked. And I'm kind of just done with scotland <laughs> in terms of the international i'm just glad that it's over um finished watching the international best picks for game week five two eight damn damn you type so fast twitch dot tv forward slash i'll be right with you guys don't you worry i'm just tweeting bam bam we are live right there we go oh nice and james is retweeting cheers buddy you are the best mod in the world all right my punts are going to be tarvoski and sabios yeah so yeah i actually came in at a great time we we're literally just talking about them um yeah, 3-0 then KDB scores. Man is essential. Best priced player in the game. Yeah, and I started with Kevin De Bruyne. We're going to go over City very soon. Um, but right now, yeah, Ceballos. If he can keep his minutes, then he's absolutely a no-brainer for me. Like, Arsenal have the third best fixtures for the next four weeks. Um, if he's not playing well, you can always jump to McGinn or you can downgrade to Cantwell and you'll be just the same as everyone else and it'll be absolutely fine. For me, on my team, he is my 11th man. And so therefore, I'm fine if he gets, if, if he's if he's benched one, one, one game out of the next four. But if he's benched in two games, in the next two games he doesn't play, then he's probably going to go out of my team and I'll just get McGinn in and I'll be happy with that because McGinn's going to get 90 minutes. He's too good. Um, I'm writing my differential article for FPL updates out Thursday. Yeah, man, you definitely need to add Sabios. Definitely. Um, right, the next players. Now, everyone's going to know who I'm going to be talking about. Um, but let's first move it on to Pepe, right? So, he hasn't done anything yet. <laughs> and that's something that we need to be absolutely aware of, right? He has done nothing. He has looked good. He is build, building his fitness right now. So, that means he's been not playing full fitness and he, and he decided to not go back to the ivory coast this international break because he wanted to build fitness um which is awesome which is fine with me um he's looked good and he's passed the eye test he just he just has whiffed too many shots right that's the thing pepe uh he's getting into good positions he's jumping into places that he should shouldn't be marked but for whatever reason he's able to lose his man he's skinning everyone i've seen him nutmeg three players already but it just seems like he's not finishing. <laughs> he needs to finish. And I was actually talking to um, Tongue and Loftus on the fantasy bet, and and he said like he watched he watched one of those highlight videos that makes Pepe look like a god. It makes him look amazing. And I actually, after listening to that and being on there, I went and found the same one, and he looks incredible. See if you go and watch his goals from the in the in Liga One. Um, he looks in unstoppable but then in arsenal he's just kind of whiffed a lot of shots so i'm not 100 sure if if it's just because he's getting used to the premier league you know it's a fast league it's very physical um but he seems to be holding his own and which is uh, something that is more noticeable or, or more in, in interesting is that he is pretty much nailed in where he's playing now usually if someone breaks their transfer record we would expect that player to be played every game, but this is Arsenal we're talking about. 
But even still, it's nice to see that in the last two games, um, Pepe has got 90 minutes into him. Now, I know he did get that, that assist, but I'm pretty sure that was a... Uh, it was a bit of a an FPL assist, wasn't it? If I'm if I'm not mistaken, not mistaken. Um, for me, Sabayas isn't good enough to be in the tenth man in my team, and my eleventh man rotated, so not worth it over Cantwell. But he has potential. Yeah, definitely. If you if you've already got someone around the Pepe mark, around that Pepe or not Pepe, um, uh, Sabayas, if you've got someone in that price bracket, there's no point in jumping ship, right? You've already got someone. They're not really that essential. There's no point. in turning your transfers but if you're looking to downgrade a midfielder or if you're just sick of having Dendonker on the uh, as your 11th man all the time you know it is someone to think about definitely um Cantwell has been playing well but Norwich just have bad fixtures I'm not 100% sure I'd be going for him over McGinn or or Sabayas if I could afford them um so yeah I'm gonna be watching Pep I probably wouldn't jump on him just yet but if you have 9.5 million and you already have De Bruyne, you could just go for it. He's 3.6 owned. He could bang three goals in and no one, no one would be shocked. So he definitely has the fixtures for it. If there was ever a time to, to punt on someone um, for Pepe would be now. But I understand that that's a big ask. So let's look at some defensive Arsenal options. <laughs> now... I was, I'll have to admit, last week I was like, I definitely want an Arsenal player instead of Zuma. And I got a lot of flack for it. Fair enough, right? Um, but I definitely, I did want to have a look to see if what I was seeing and what I was feeling was correct in the stats. And it's kind of a yes and no, right? So I've got this prepared. This is the current table with uh, expected goals against, and you can see Arsenal are like fifth worst, right? 6.52, that's not the greatest. Um, they've got they've conceded six goals and they've scored six goals, which is not the greatest, but they have played Liverpool and they've played Tottenham. So does that mean that we should give them a buy? Um, what, was their, what was their expected goals against without those bad teams? So when they're... Are, are, when they're just having good fixtures what are they like and i've actually got that stat here because you can just put look at that you can just put this website's amazing you can just put the date in that you want to look and bam it gives you the the stats so arsenal are off clearly and obviously doing much better when they were just against their first two games which if we remind ourselves were uh newcastle and burnley and they conceded one goal in two games and their expected goals against for that was, where are they? 1.77, which is just behind Brighton, who had good fixtures, Wolves, who played Leicester, remember, and that 0-0 draw, um, Watford, who have been shite in both aspects of that, um, and then obviously Manchester City, Manchester United, and Sheffield United, who kept those kept those. Uh, ridiculous clean sheets against the what was it game week two when Lundstrom scored number one man mental um let me have a wee read of the chat max aaron's apparently injured for norwich another defensive injury city going to run riot <sighs> the injury list at norwich is so daunting i don't know whether to laugh or cry yeah jimmy's a big norwich fan <laughs> however aaron's isn't massive cog in the actual defense anyway uh, yeah i'd i'd I have no idea where they're gonna go. It's really difficult to not Captain Sterling and the fact that they're not gonna have anyone on the left hand side. Like I'm pretty sure it's now a centre back that plays there or on the right for, for Norwich and now they're I, I I don't I don't know. We'll talk about captains in a minute. It's a really difficult one this week. And um, we were talking to uh, FPL Audit on Thursday and he said that he just captains Salah at home and that's something that I've been thinking about and looking at the stats and I was like, Yeah, that makes sense. He's been doing really well. But now Sterling is playing against one of the leakiest defenses. Um, so I'm not 100% sure. Lewis on the left, Aaron's on the right. So that means Aaron's is playing on the position that Sterling would be against, right? Sterling's on the left, Aaron's on the right. Um, Sam Bryan would likely fit well or fit in. I actually know Byron from uh, Football Manager. That's interesting. City players are more than essential, yeah. We'll talk about that in a minute. So, all in all, Arsenal's Arsenal's um, defence was good 
when they were playing against shit teams. Go figure, right? But it's good to see that the stats back that up there. So 1.69, um, or not, sorry, 1.77, um, conceding one goal and against Burnley that was, right? Um, but they kept a clean sheet. So I think if we look at their fixtures, um, Watford, Aston Villa, Man United, Bournemouth, they could potentially keep more clean sheets. Um, and I was looking at the stats for um, Maitland Niles. So let's have a look at him. Where are you? First of all, Bellerin's not anywhere near coming back. So they said that he was going to start training with the players this month at some point, but he hasn't yet. And he's not been pictured training so it means that maitland niles is a better pick than tierney who's already started training with the with the other players um i was on kolasinac for a while but then when i looked at the actual stats um it showed that maitland niles is actually crossing more although kolasinac has been in the box more and i'm not expecting kolasinac to score so i don't really need him in the box I need him to be crossing. So that's something that I was looking at. So let's let's go quickly to the last game that they played, which if you remember was against Tottenham, which is a great thing to be looking at. So let's quickly go there because I accidentally closed it like a twat. Do 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 do. Mm -mm -mm, player stats. Right, so defensively for Arsenal, Maitland Niles by far better than Kalasanach in defense. And we always knew that, right? Um, class Natch is just way too far up. There's nothing that we can do. I'm probably getting an Arsenal defender when Tierney and Bellerin are back. It's Raw says. Yeah, definitely me as well. Like I said, I'm going to be wildcarding game week nine. Um, and Arsenal have great fixtures for a long time. Um, but for a punt for now, I think they've also got enough enough about them that they could probably do something well there as, uh, at the same time. So Maitland Niles, good defender uh, in terms of stats against Tottenham compared to the rest of their defense. So that's good at least, right? Um, but offensively, our passing wise, let's look at. Key passes for Maitland Niles is three, whereas Kalasinac only did two. Crosses three, the same as Kalasinac, right? Accurate crosses, they're the same, um, but his accuracy is slightly less. And like I said, there's more touches in the box for Kalasinac. So comparing those two, it seems like Maitland Niles is a lot better than I thought he was. Um, and he's also played 90 minutes four times. He's probably nailed there until Bellerin gets back. Whereas, you know, Kalasinac is not 100% nailed. Although Mon Monreal did uh, move. So it's a bit up in the air. If they play a 3-5-2 or a 3-5-1-1, one, one, depending on, on what Emery wants to do. Oh, excuse me, too much, way too much bourbon. I, d I didn't just start drinking when we went on stream. Mm. But I was talking about it on Twitter, and if you haven't, if if you haven't already looked at those players and looked at a bunch of research, all you really need to look at, or, or all you really need to know, is that Maitland Niles is cheaper, and they're pretty much the same player. So, for a four-week punt, and that's all he's going to be. Because for, like I said, wild card in game week uh, nine, for me, game week five, six, seven, eight are good enough to just put Maitland Niles in the team. He can't be any worse than Zuma. Although knowing my luck with the transfer so far, he's going to score an own goal against Watford. But we'll see. I assume that was Coke. Bloody hell, that's a lot of bourbon. <laughs> um, there's not that much bourbon in it. Although, you know, when you get to the bottom of a bottle and you're like, ah, fuck it. We'll just put it all in because there's not enough for like three shots, but it's more than two you know so you just kind of put it in and hope for the best mm. anyway so that's arsenal so like we said abamyang's a really great show uh lacazette's too rotation risky just now um pepe hasn't really done anything yet and i kind of want to look more at him i already have sabios and he's has looked amazing i just wish he wasn't as rotation risky as he is however like i said there's a lot of points to suggest that he will be playing um, especially if Torreira and Zaka are actually injured. So we'll find out more about the uh, those injuries, I'm assuming, during the uh, the press conference. So look out for that on Friday. Um, and yeah, last but not least is uh, their defence. And for me, it's Malin Niles over Kalasinac, though um, they're pretty much the same player. So if you have a strong feeling for Kalasinac, then go for him, right? 
Um, so yeah, that's Arsenal. Right, next team. Next team. Uh, I want to quickly go through Burnley. That's who I want to do. So let's have a look. Where are you? Burnley, right here. Bam. All right, so Burnley in our fixture list are top. They have the best fixtures based on our fixture tracker for game week five to eight. <laughs> Jimmy's like Pope, Peters, Barnes, done. That's pretty much it, right? Um, in a nutshell, their defense has been good. So if you have Pope, then awesome. If you don't have Pope, Peters is a slight rotation risk. So let's have a look here at their most owned players. Um, Barnes, of course, we'll come back to him, right? Peters, um, McNeil, I have no, I, no idea. Um, I have no idea what's happening with him, right? He's, 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 is he injured or is he not? What's the point of spending that much money on him? Uh, six million's a lot. Um, Pope is 12% owned, so he's he's very high in the goalkeeper department. Um, he's been playing well. He's been getting a lot of saves. So if we look at his saves, right, three, seven, two, and five. So he has had two save points, uh, one there. So that's four save points in the last four games. That's nuts. That's nuts. So he is going to continuously do that. Um, the problem with Pope that I have is that, like, if you're conceding so many shots that you can save that many, then it's it doesn't show that you're going to be keeping many clean sheets, right? You need to be also keeping clean sheets. Now, they have played Arsenal, Wolves, and Liverpool, and the team that they played at the start was Southampton, who they who they kept out. So with the best fixtures, I'm assuming they're going to keep at least a little bit. Um, yeah, maybe McNeil if you're feeling fruity. <laughs> Jimmy says, Jimmy, I mean... Yeah, I don't know. He's got a knock. I'm not really sure what's going on with that. Um, six million for for 0.7 more, you could get Barnes. So it's a bit it's a bit difficult for me. Or you know, 0.4 less, you could get uh, McGinn. Um, so the person that I was looking at um, was actually Loughton or Loughton or Loughton. Yeah, however you say his name. Um, he is actually, for stats, doing a bit better in the crossing department than Peters. Peters also is fighting for his place, whereas Loughton kind of is keeping it going. Liam says, going to get Pope for Foster this week. I think that's an absolutely tremendous pick. I think that's great. And I think we're going to be looking at your team in a little bit as well, Liam. So uh, stay tuned for those RMTs. The best thing about the RMTs, I think, is that a lot of people on YouTube, they'll, they'll go and look at it, find a team that's similar to them, and then just see what they can learn from that i think that's that's the best thing that's why i like doing it so even if we don't get to your team um you know most teams are more similar than you think um but yeah liam fosters Fo I, watford should have kept clean sheets so that's just unlucky on your part um so yeah lawton lawton however you want to say his name he has been playing better than peters he just hasn't had many assists and peters got those two in the first game um, we're not really going to be able to see how well that he can do until we start watching him playing against shit teams again. But as a punt, um, the fact that he's only 6% owned, I think that's a decent, it's a decent little uh, differential you've got there. Peters is about to go up in price, I'm sure. He'll go up in price by the time uh, game week 5 starts. So if you want to go with the grain, 8.4% is still quite a differential. Um, and there you can see his fixtures that's phenomenal right Brighton, Norwich, Aston Villa Everton at home and then Leicester, Chelsea is not the greatest but then you've got you know more good fixtures so he's potentially just a, a keep and you could maybe sub him out for Chelsea and Leicester bring him back in for a four week punt he's pretty awesome the problem I have is that those fixtures are better for attacking options as opposed to their defense and what I mean by that is that Brighton away is a difficult fixture um, you know last year they scored against City at home Brighton did um, real slim Haiti <laughs> good name welcome to the fucking sexy club my man Thank you for following. And if you are here for the first time, you might as well hit that follow button because we're trying to build 
up to 200 followers so I can do that that wild card stream. I'm just gonna be streaming from the second I hit that button all the way up to I build my first team. It could take hours, but I'm gonna be cutting it down for YouTube. So if you're here for the first time, please follow because I would love to be able to do that with you guys. Um, and I'll tell you when I'm on live and stuff and you come come hang out. We have a good time. So yeah, Peters is a good choice, but the attacking assets are where it's at. Now Barnes, everyone knows that Barnes has been doing well and Barnes has, you know, great fixtures and he's been scoring and he's risen in price twice. And there's a big whole train happening with the monkey on, uh, on, on Twitter and everything, right? But even so, he's only 11.2% owned. And actually, a lot of that is came from, I think he was 8% owned when we started uh, the international break. And he's been slowly brought in by people on their wild card or people who are taking some players out. Ashley Barnes has been playing incredibly well and is deserved of way more than just 11.2. Um, the problem is, is that there are so many good options up front, so we don't know who to get, right? Alaire's been playing well, and he's got great XG. Um, Abraham plays for a top six side, and he's only seven million, um, unless he's went up. I'm sure he's probably went up 7.1 or whatever, right? Um, and then Pookie's been phenomenal. No need to even talk about Pookie. You should all have him in your team. Um, so yeah, so Barnes has been playing well. He's not under the radar, but you have to remember that our Twitter community that we're all involved in is a small percentage. So he is still a differential Barnes. He will take you up the league if you don't have him. And he's playing against really, really shit opponents. So let's have a look at, at the, um, let me see here, understat to show you who he's playing against. So like I said, he's playing against Brighton, Norwich and Aston Villa. Aston Villa and Norwich have very, very, very high expected goals against. Like annoyingly so, um, right? So there is, poop. There is Norwich, third worst. Aston Villa, fourth worst, and uh, and then Brighton are probably doing a little bit better. Um, where are they? They are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight worst. So they're twelfth in our little list, um, and that's mostly they're probably Brighton are a bit higher because they've had really good fixtures, but they're but that's probably overinflated. And if we go over, um, they've conceded seven goals. Only the third worst, that's generous. Yeah, yeah. Norwich have been conceding a crazy amount of goals, um, but they were slightly unlucky with a few of them. Um, but still, yeah, Norwich is just an open net, pretty much. <laughs> they just they just don't have a keeper. Peastwood. Mama fucking Mia. Oh, I'm never going to get tired of that. I love it. I might actually turn it up. It's not loud enough. Thank you very much, buddy, for following. Welcome to that big, fat, sexy club. We only need like 90 more big, fat, sexy people. And then we are 200 strong and we can do anything, right? Thank you so much for following, buddy. Appreciate it. Um, Barnes is amazing. Now, we all know, like I said, that he is good. And that there is hype but let me just show you real quick how good he is because you won't believe it right and um, I've got it written down here but I want to actually show you guys because I wrote about it in my article it's going up soon and um, he's outshining not only the rest of the clarets right he's outshining most strikers in the whole fucking bleak right look at this shit it's crazy and when I was researching it, I couldn't believe it. So, like, Burnley are the first team that come up in my arsenal, or in, in my article, because it's, it's mental. Look, there he is right there, right? Let's go into stat mode. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Stat mode. Barnes. Bam. Look at that. 4.2 shots, 2.2 on target. You know who's better than him for shots? Aguero, Jesus, and Lacazette. And Firmino. That's it. That's it. One, two, one, two, three, four t players. So he is fifth best for shots in the whole league. Shots on target, which is up the way. Pookie and Lacazette only. He is third best for shots on target per 90 in the whole league. That's fucking nuts. 
Chris Wood could start scoring against those teams. Yeah, he could. But Barnes has been playing amazing. And that's crazy considering the teams that they've been playing. Um, he's just... And, and when you watch him, if you if you if you watched any of those Burnley games, like remember that goal that he scored from outside the box? It just seemed like it was a cross uh, or, or a ball forward, and he just got on the end of it and scored. It was like, oh, that's not going to happen every week, you know. And he seems to be kind of like getting into these weird tussles and stuff, and it's kind of taken away from his game. But looking at the raw stats, like you know, he gets way more shots off than most players. It's nuts, and the fact that he's got the best fixtures means that he's going to be getting eat like this is not going to stop this is going to get better because he didn't have good fixtures to start with like let's remind ourselves who he was playing against to start with right southampton good fixture okay give him that two goals arsenal away bad fixture still got a goal wolves away we didn't realize how good that fixture was at the time but wolves i've still got a decent defense and bolly was still playing um and he got a goal and then Liverpool, which we know is a horrible fixture, um, he didn't get a goal, fair enough, um, he got subbed off with 18 minutes to go, fair enough, but we're not expecting anything from Liverpool, so for those three really shit games, and per 90, he is still at the tip top of the, of the league for shots and shots on target, and XG, look at that, XG, actual goals, he's, he's exceeding his XG, He's a monster. He's like a mini Vardy. It's crazy. And there's my little Alair up there. But yeah, so Barnes is Barnes is playing so well. Like, more well than you would think based on the hype. Um, cheers for the uptime. I'm going quick. I'm going quick. So, yeah, in terms of, of Burnley and how good their fixtures are, um, I think that it's really difficult to go for a defender when you could potentially go for Barnes. It's just, he's just too good. Um, and I didn't realize how good he was until I started looking at the stats, and now I wish I had him. And I think I would probably prefer him over Pookie in the last two games, um, or the next two games, rather. So, that's Burnley done. We've done Arsenal, we've done Aston Villa, we've done, uh, we've done Burnley now. The last team is, of course, Manchester City. And I feel like that is self-explanatory. But there's a few things that we need to cover. First of all, Laporte is injured. Um, and second of all, like, what are we doing with Aguero? Should we own him? Should we jump on him? Is there a potential for going Sterling, Kevin De Bruyne and Aguero? Um, should we be trying to figure that out? Man City have got great fixtures. Yeah, there's no denying that. But they're also fixture proof. So anything that you do do with uh, uh, Man City players is probably for the long haul. Messi to the near post. Big fat sexy to team number 109-ish, I think. Messi to the near post. Oh, welcome to the big fat sexy team. <laughs> I feel like that might be a uh, a fake account, but I, thank you nonetheless. <laughs> Mama fucking Mia. Yeah, man. <laughs> so funny. There's actually someone, I was looking at my follow list, and there's someone named like what my previous name was before FPL Dave, but it's spelt weird. Like there's a, f I don't know why people, do <laughs> I don't know why people do that, but thank you nonetheless for going, creating a fake Twitch account and, uh, and following. That means a lot. That's actually more effort than just following with your normal account. So it means more to me. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I'm going to play again. Just, just because of that. That was great. Let's hear that again. Messi to the near post. Oh! Messi to the net. Thank you very much for following buddy. Um, Right, so Arsenal, next four. Bam, let's see that. No, that's not a fake account. You just, it's just a coincidence. <laughs> it's just a coincidence. Um, it's not a fake account. It's a real account with a real person behind it. But it's, uh, it, <laughs> I love your name. Amazing. Right, Man City have got really good fixtures. Wolves have been playing rubbish. Everton away is a bit hard but not the worst Watford have been playing absolute shit Norwich are just so open so in the next couple of games they're going to be flying right if we go up to 10 games in this little thing 
like they still have great fixtures after that crystal palace away is not the best but aston villa is so good home southampton are so good home yes they play liverpool and chelsea you're not really going to get rid of them for that and then newcastle after that that's a great fixture run um is it worth jumping in to aguero for those fixtures what do we think Zorba 2134 keep faith in Kane with his upcoming fixtures upcoming fixtures over the long course of it is a yes but I think I would prefer Arsenal's fixtures I think I would prefer Aubameyang and um, Crystal Palace at home is okay Kane's been playing Kane's been playing a weird game of football he's currently a center mid I don't know why he likes to play there right now He's not pressing as much as he, th he should be. His goals are inflated based on penalties, which, yes, he gets a few more than usual, but it's just... You don't want to be relying on penalties, man. It's really difficult to see. Um, but in the next four, uh, Spurs do have good fixtures. So if you've got other fires... I mean, Kane's not a fire yet. Um, to the near Zorb! Thanks very much for following. I feel like you asked that question. And then if I didn't answer, you weren't going to follow. So I'm pleased that I answered that. Thanks very much. Welcome to the big, fat, perfect team. Mm. Love it. Right. So let's have a look at City. So I want to show you guys this. A lot of people have said that they're worried about... Whoops, that's forwards. Worried about Aguero. But in percentage own tab, right? It's Sterling, then De Bruyne, then Aguero. So I would reckon that Aguero... Um, owners that don't have Sterling are a lot more scared of Sterling than us Sterling owners are scared of Aguero, right? Aguero, we know, is a 60-minute man. Um, he played 21 minutes game week one, 65 minutes game week two, then they gave him a good run out for the last two. They are going to the Ukraine after Norwich, right? So that means that they play um, their first game in Champions League I think it's Wednesday, um, which for anyone who owns uh, anyone who owns Aguero, that's going to be difficult. Obviously, they could be 5-0 up by 60 minutes, but he's still only going to be playing 60 minutes. And especially since Jesus is back, um, remember Pep said, I think it was the 30th of August he came out, they tweeted it saying that Jesus was either going to be back before the international break definitely afterwards and obviously being injured he didn't go and play for brazil so jesus is probably going to start on the bench and come in at some point for for aguero now yes he's gonna hurt because he still has 60 minutes and aguero can do what most strikers do in 90 in only 60 minutes 100 percent understand that and if you own him why get rid of him he's playing amazing totally but for everyone else for all the players that only have sterling i think that trying to go to get Aguero you'll need to lose Salah or you'll need to lose another player the only time I would ever consider get Aguero if I look at a team in the rate my teams would be if I had uh, Kane and I would be very tempted but I wouldn't waste a hit on it so I'd probably go for Aubameyang instead but the people that you have to own are Sterling and De Bruyne or at least De Bruyne and Aguero but De Bruyne is the number one. Three assists and a goal against Scotland. The fucking arsehole. <laughs> um, and then so far in the league, he's actually had, you know, one, two, three, four, five assists and a goal. That's crazy. That's crazy. One, two. Th is that six? Six attacking returns in four games. He's a monster. He's going to be a monster. I, I, I can't believe anyone wouldn't own him now if they did uh, if they didn't already um and he's got the fixtures to keep it going so why not why not get him so as long as you have de bruyne and aguero or de bruyne and sterling you're gonna have to do it man he's too good and he's too cheap um let's talk about laporte at least you can switch allegiances and support canada if it gets too depressing <laughs> yeah who's who have we got for canada there was a player who was it? He played for Cardiff, right? I'm pretty sure. And he was left wing. Is it? Oh, it starts with an H. 
oh help me out who was he he scored against someone and i remember being raging because i had junior hoylet that's who he is yes i remember having him on fifa and he had like an inform hoylet fucking wee dickhead lost me something and i and everyone was like oh at least he's canadian like <laughs> i don't care i'd rather have the fpl points yeah hoylet i think he's our best player he's our only player i think there's a a center mid that played for like a, a, a championship team i don't really know i haven't looked at the squad since 2011 when i was still playing fifa um but anyway yeah so so for me with laporte it's not a big deal if you don't own him yeah if you own him then you're gonna have to go norwich hero afonso davies played for Bayern. plays for Bayern. Afonso Davies, Simeon Jackson back in the day. Yeah, I'm sure there's Canadian players dotted about, right? But like the fact that we can only name three, <laughs> or and and one of them is specifically not playing anymore, <laughs> that just tells you everything you need to know about Canadian footballers. Um, so yeah, Laporte is injured. It sucks for owners. Fucking yes, we can cry, but do you go for a player that? Um, do you go for a player that has? Uh, you know, a city shirt on, or do you go for someone completely different? Now, I would only go to a different player f if I had Laporte. If A, I didn't have Dean, or B, I didn't have any Liverpool players. Because, like we've seen, the fixtures are too good, and it's not Laporte keeping everything gold at the back, although he is a good player. It's their tactics. It's Pep. It's, it's the way he plays City. It's the possession football that he has. So, for everyone who's ever went, oh no, Laporte is injured, should I get rid of my City defenders? Fuck no, that's a waste of a transfer. Don't even don't even consider that, it's mental. Um, Zinchenko is, is a great option still. Um, until Mendy gets back, Zinchenko is not a fire. He's just not worth, he's not even worth thinking about. Because when Mendy comes back, yes, it's going to be sad, we're going to have to do something about that, but you don't have to worry about it, right? Ota Mendy, 5.4 million. Um, nailed because Stones is injured and um, Laporte is injured. They're not going to play Fernandinho over Otamendi when Stones is just coming back from injury, potentially this game week or next game week, right? They just wouldn't do it. Otamendi is a centre back, has been all his life. He's been playing great. He hasn't looked shit. I would probably go for him if I had Laporte. Um, Walker isn't going to be displaced um, now that you know he's he's probably going to move into the center center back position if stones is um is still injured if fernandinho is not playing there um what walker is probably my least favorite of of the choices out of otamendi zinchenko and 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 himself just because i think that eventually he's going to be rotated but we are still in the exact same position with city players than than we were like a week ago before Laporte is injured right all of those players still have all the risks associated with them that we did before the only difference is Otamendi's possibly more nailed and he's super cheap so for everyone else who has City players like don't even worry about it I'm actually considering double up I considered it for a little bit I was thinking right I could just go to from Zuma to Otamendi and just deal with it because like look at their fixtures right Norwich away Norwich might score Watford home, they won't score. Everton away, they might score. Wolves at home, they won't score. Crystal Palace away, like that. I think it for the fixture run that they have, I don't think it would be stupid to double up. So yeah, if I'm considering that, then you guys should not be considering like getting rid of anyone. Um, and the poor eight owners, if you have Dean and you have a Trent Alexander-Arnold, then or even a Robertson or a Van Dyke, then yeah, just go for Zinchenko or Otamendi, and you'll be golden. Um, can you show us your team? Yes, I will show you my team now. Thank you very much, guys, for following and for sticking with me. Now we're about an hour in, just a bit before, in before Delafeu hat trick against City. Yeah, fuck right off, Liam. <laughs> if he does that, I'll eat my pencil next time we see you. I'm going to be raging. I'll be absolutely raging if that happens. It's not going to happen. If he ruins my clean sheet, though, I'll be fucking so annoyed. <laughs> Gold. How's it going, man? That'd be great. That'd be great if that never happened, Zorba. Stop asking. Gold. How's it going? 
appreciate you coming in. Right, just in time for the for the the uh, the rate my teams. So if you have a rate my team and you've sent it to um, you've sent it to my Twitter, then awesome. If you haven't, go scroll down a little bit on Twitch. You'll see my my Twitter feed. Find my last tweet and just send me your team. James is going to send me all the teams of the people that are here. So let him know if you've sent it. I'm sure. Uh, I haven't seen yours. It's raw. Um, Liam, I know you've sent yours in. Um, but if you want your team rated, just send it in just now and we'll get to it in just a second. 